Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you haven't been here before. I'm really excited to show you this rainbow swirl and floral tumbler. We're going to start out, well this is actually a 32 ounce prepped plump from the Steel Magnolia but we are using a 24 ounce prepped plump for the remaining parts of the tutorial. This is just how I glittered and what we used. So I'm using our glitter glue from Artistry Epoxy. I'm going to brush that all over this tumbler. We don't have to spray paint since this tumbler did come prepped, which is amazing. I did a few of these actually because it just saves so much time and steps not having to sand and spray paint and get my tumblers ready for any spray paints and epoxies. After my glitter glue is nice and even, we're going to use Alter Ego from PDB Creative Studio and just give this a good coat all over. Once we have this covered, then roll it in either parchment paper or printer paper to flatten the glitter out. And that helps minimize the amount of epoxy and sanding that you have to do to get this smooth. All right, so here we have our 24 ounce plump with two coats of epoxy. I did sand in between those layers so it will be smooth to add on our decals. I got this rainbow stripe sheet from Hobby Lobby. They do still have it, but I have had it forever and not really knowing what to do with it. I just saw it on the shelf and thought I had to have it because I knew at some point in time it was going to come in handy. I think we do that with a lot of our craft supplies. <laughs> I just cut a piece of transfer tape because I wanted to keep these perfectly straight as they are on the sheet and place that over top of those stripes. I trimmed out around the edges so I could trim off a little bit of that plastic backing behind them and place it on the tumbler and use the hinge method to place these down or press them down. Don't laugh at my kitty scissors, y'all. <laughs> I could not. Okay, I have like five pair of scissors, a couple small ones, and then the rest are the larger size scissors. So if I misplace one, I could find the others, but I can't find them anywhere. I misplace my stuff all the time. I have an awesome craft knife and you'll see in this tutorial, I'm still using just the, just a blade <laughs> for a craft knife. My daughter was in the room at the time and she said, here, mommy, since you can't ever find yours, you can use my scissors. Certainly I'm not the only one that does that. I just lose everything. So I trimmed off a little bit of the backing from our stripes and placed it on the tumbler with the first and last stripe being right below the top rim and right above the bottom rim. So all of them are going to be on the tumbler and I don't have any that's falling short. I used my squeegee to press the rest of those stripes down. I want to keep them all in line, so I did take my time. And remember, these tutorials most of the time are sped up times two. Once I make sure that they're all pressed down really well, I'm going to trim off that excess with, I would say, a craft knife, but here I am just using a blade. Jeez. If you do this, be careful, okay? Don't cut yourself. <laughs> 10 out of 10, do not recommend. <laughs> so I took those little stripe pieces, and I'm going to set those to the side because I want to make a keychain to match this tumbler. And then I'm going to make sure those ends are pressed down and remove that transfer tape. We'll be using our Cami Page Boutique vinyl trimmer to get those edges really nice and straight along the bottom and the top rims. So I'm just leaving those for now. I had actually intended on using the Daisy Element Sheet that you see in the background. But once I had those stripes on there, I wanted to add something with all of the colors of the rainbow. So I grabbed the floral sheet from my latest bundle with Southern Belle Glitter 
and we have this really large floral cluster that I thought would fit kind of perfectly in between our stripes. To apply a rub on transfer, you want to make sure that your surface is smooth and glossy. You don't want any sand marks or lumps or bumps underneath your transfer. Trim off a little piece of the backing, double, triple, quad check. Make sure that you are placing it where you want it because once it's down, it's there unless you sand it off or remove it with acetone and then that will result in having to put another layer of epoxy on there. So make sure you have it where you want it. Trim off a little piece of the backing, put it in place. Once you have it where you want, press that exposed piece down and then press the decal down as you are removing the backing away. All of these come with a wooden tool. You can use that to rub over top of the acetate sheet that is protecting your transfer. And then very carefully remove that sheet. Once I had the larger piece on there, I wanted to go in with smaller elements and fill in some of that space. So I just place those. You don't have to use the hinge method on these since they're so tiny. Just make sure you do have them pressed down really well before you remove that protective covering on top. And for those that went up to the side of our stripes, I did trim those before I placed them because I did not want my transfers to stick to my stripes. I sort of was happy with the way that it looked at this point, so I did jump in and remove the excess of the vinyl stripes by just using my Cami Page vinyl trimmer and the half spacer. And then I went in and very carefully removed the extra pieces of vinyl that were trimmed off. It was kind of difficult to remove those because the pieces were so tiny, but we got those removed on the top and the bottom. And then I went back in with a little more of the rub on transfers. There's no need to seal these in. I just 
either use a thick viscosity epoxy or allow my epoxy to set up for just a minute so that it's a little thicker whenever I apply it on top of the rub-on transfers so it does not repel. I did used to say to do like a micro thin layer of a clear spray paint. However, I did learn throughout the winter where it was warm in my house and cold outside that that can actually cause some of your decals or rub on transfers to crack with the change of temperature. So I did stop sealing these in and just started using a thick viscosity epoxy or a little bit thicker layer of epoxy and it 100% prevents any repelling. I am completely obsessed with how this turned out. It's bright, colorful, and I love that those stripes were so darn easy. Next time I go to Hobby Lobby, I'm grabbing me an extra one and definitely checking out the rest of those stickers to see what else I can come up with. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this tutorial. If so, give it a big thumbs up for me and make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Hit the bell in the corner to be notified anytime a new tutorial drops. As always, all materials I have used will be linked down in the description below with some coupon codes for you. That is all for today. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.